Hi, it is Thursday and it's time again for Bible study. Amen. And as usual, the purpose of our Bible study is to encourage the people of God with the word of God. And today we are concluding our four part study of how God communicates with his children, how God speaks to us. Amen. And we are wrapping it up. We started off looking at how God speaks with symbolism. That was week two. Week one was hearing God through dreams. Uh, last week, we covered the voices of God. Sometimes in the thunder. Sometimes it's in the quiet voice. Sometimes in the whirlwind, like we see what happened with Job. And sometimes, as we have already established, it's symbolically or with visions and dreams. So now today we're going to conclude God can also speak through miraculous signs. Miraculous signs. And we can take a look, children of God, that as we open our eyes first thing in the morning, we know that God is in everything. We take a look at the sky, the clouds, the birds, and the flowers, and it's all a miracle. There is no two flower that's identical, no two snowflake that's identical, even the birth of a baby, the way our body works, you know, the lens of our eyes, you know, our lashes, our brains, you know, God is in everything and everything is just miraculous. I mean, nobody can totally understand it. Doctors will study for decades and still don't really understand how the body works and all the moving pieces. Amen. That's why it's called a practice, because they're practicing on us. Amen. So with that being said, we're studying now. And of, as usual, the purpose of our study is to encourage the people of God with the word of God. And please remember, we studied from a New Living Translation. Please, please share with your friends and family, because we're finishing it up as of this week with how God speaks to his children. And we're going to Exodus chapter 8, verse 1 to 25. Exodus chapter 8, verse 1 to 25. And our topic, again, is God speaks through miraculous signs. Hold on to your hat. We're going to go through this and just have a good time with the Lord. Amen. Then the Lord said to Moses, go back to Pharaoh and announce to him, this is what the Lord says. Let my people go so they can worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will send a plague of frogs across your entire land. The Nile River will swarm with frogs. They will come up out of the river and into your palace, even into your bedroom and onto your bed. They will enter the houses of your officials and your people. They will even jump into your own ovens and your kneading bowels. Frogs will jump on you, your people, and all your officials. Wow, children of God. Listen, <laughs> the very idea, I don't know about you, but I don't like frogs at all. So this was just a threat. Of this happening would have had me running saying, okay, okay, I surrender, I surrender. Verse 5. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, raise the staff in your hand over the rivers, canals, and ponds of Egypt. And bring up frogs over all the land. So Aaron raised his hand over the waters of Egypt and frogs came up and covered the whole land. But the magicians were able to do the same thing with their magic. They too caused frogs to come up out of the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and begged, plead with the Lord to take the frogs away from me and my people. I will let your people go so they can offer sacrifices to the Lord. <laughs> this is what he's saying now, right? Verse 9. 
You set the time, Moses replied. Tell me when you want me to pray for you, your officials and your people. Then you and your houses will be rid of the frogs. They will remain only in the Nile River. Do it tomorrow, Pharaoh said. All right, Moses replied. It will be as you have said. Then you will know that there is no, there is no one like the Lord our God. Oh, that is so good. We right now, children of God, need to know that there is no one like the Lord our God. The frogs will leave you and your houses, your officials, and your people. They will remain only in the Nile River. So Moses and Aaron left Pharaoh's palace and Moses cried out to the Lord about the frogs he had inflicted on Pharaoh. And the Lord did just what Moses had predicted. The frogs in the houses, the courtyards, and the fields all died. The Egyptians piled them into great heaps, and a terrible stench filled the land. Oof. But when Pharaoh saw that the relief had come, he became stubborn. He refused to listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had predicted. So the Lord said to Moses, this is verse 16. Tell Aaron, raise your staff and strike the ground. The dust will turn into swarms of gnats throughout the land of Egypt. So Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded them. When Aaron raised his hand and struck the ground with his staff, not infested the entire land, covering Egyptians and their animals, all the dust in the land of e Egypt turned into gnats. Can you just imagine that, children of God? Oh, that would have blown my mind. Pharaoh's magician tried to do the same thing with their secret arts, but this time they failed. And the gnats covered everyone, people and animals alike. Verse 19. This is the finger of God, the magicians exclaimed to Pharaoh. But Pharaoh's heart remained hard. He wouldn't listen to them just as the Lord had predicted. A plague of flies. Then the Lord said to Moses, get up early in the morning and stand in Pharaoh's way as he goes down to the river. Say to him, this is what the Lord says. Let my people go so they can worship me. If you refuse, then I will send swarms of flies on you, your officials, your people, and all the houses. The Egyptian homes will be filled with flies and the ground will be covered with them. But this time I will spare the region of Goshen where my people live. Oh, come on, somebody. No flies will be found there. Then you will know that I am the Lord and I am present even in the heart of your land. Look at Jesus. Listen, listen, God is, I mean, I, I don't know how they went through all this and still held on to the children of Israel. I would think that they would have let them go miracles. God was speaking through the miracles that I have authority, that I can set up kings, I can tear down kings, that I can send gnats, I can send frogs, I can send flies, I can send whatever. He was using miracles to speak to Pharaoh and his entire entourage and they refused to listen. Let's keep going. Let's go back to verse 22. But this time I will spare the region of Goshen where my people live. No flies will be found there. Then you will know that I am the Lord and that I am present even in the heart of your land. I will make a clear distinction between my people and your people. This miraculous sign will happen tomorrow. And the Lord did just as he said. And a thick swarm of flies filled Pharaoh's palace and the houses of his officials, the whole land of Egypt was thrown into chaos by the flies. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron. All right, go ahead. 
and offer sacrifices to your God, he said, but do it here in this land. <laughs> so I guess that totally got him, but let's keep going. Verse 21. So now, so now we are in Exodus 13 and verse 21. Exodus 13 now and verse 21. The Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud and he provided light at night with a pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel by day or by night. So Pharaoh let them go and finally... These mirac miraculous speeches that God was doing with the animals and the insects and all that allowed Pharaoh finally to hear God and decided to let them go. So the verse 13, 21 says, the Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud and he provided light at night with a pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel by day or by night. Again, God speaking to now the children of Israel saying, I love you. I care for you. I don't want you to stumble in the dark, so I'll give you light. And in the daytime, I will give you a, a pillar of cloud to make sure that you won't be scorched by the desert sun. Listen, there's always provision if you are obedient to God. He has provision, whatever he told you to do, because we all have a purpose. We all have a ministry and we all have an assignment. Whatever God told you to do, whoever this is for, step out in faith and do it. Know that God has already sent the provisions. He already have things in place. Don't sweat the small stuff. God is bigger than the small stuff. Amen. Jeremiah 10, 13 says, when he speaks in the thunder, the heavens roar with rain. He causes the clouds to rise over the earth. He sends the lightning with the rain and releases the wind from his storehouses. Okay. It, you know, is it getting through? Is it getting through here? Ezekiel 43, 2. Suddenly the glory of the God of Israel appeared from the east. The sound of his coming was like the roaring of rushing waters and the whole landscape shone with his glory. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. The whole landscape shone with his glory. Shine for Jesus, saints of God. Shine for Jesus. Know that he is ahead of you on the path. Know that he's making everything smooth and giving you the way to go. Shine for Jesus. John 3 and 8 says, The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. We are born of the Spirit of God. We know His voice. We know His love, His care, and His touch. We know that He is able to keep us from falling. We know that He says, Greater is He that's in us than He that's in the world. We know that He says, We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We know that. Step out in faith. Do what God tells you to do and know that it's already done, finished, completed because God said so. Amen. And lastly, Psalm 68, 33 says, sing to the one who rides across the ancient heavens, his mighty voice thundering from the sky. God's voice thunders all the time. God speaks to us where we are in the situation that we're in and he is speaking to you right now. What is God saying to you? Do you recognize his voice? I want you to drop into the chat on today. 
inbox me and tell me how you hear from God. What does his voice sound like to you? And what your journey has been with God. I want to hear from you all. Please inbox me, amen. And don't forget to share this with your friends and family. And with that, we have now concluded our four-part series and how God speaks to his children, his communications with us, the symbolisms, the things he allows to happen, and the miraculous acts, his voices from the whirlwind, and how he blesses us. Amen. And with that, we're going to go to a prayer. of praying for Lydia, Ayana, Emmett, Starlet, Giovanni, Shaka for family, Corey, Jordan, Cassandra, Graves, Georgette, Norma Reed, Anthony Walker, Julian Walker, and family, Elijah, Echo, Don Cosby, Grace Appleby, Michael Moore, Mario French, or Mario French, Pastor Teal, Leonie Walker, Tracy Sisko, Lee Mullins, Marlene, Franklin Brown, Donna, Jean Goldsby, Wright family, Rich Big, Lucinda Downer, Paulette Redwood, Daryl Anderson, Israel, Nigeria, Kenya, Ethiopia, South Africa, Puerto Rico, Madeline Turner, Andre, Victoria, Justin, Margaret and family, Maxine. We're praying for Jeffrey Brown. We're praying for Do Donald Rigby, Gary Fouch. We're praying for Turkey, Russia, the Ukraine, and United States of America. Let's pray. Father God, in the matchless name of Jesus, we come right now to you, God, thanking you for the study that we have done, understanding and hearing clearly that we have a God that speaks to us, that you speak to us in our own uh, mind, Lord God, in, in an audible voice or sometimes in a shout, depending on the situation and the circumstance. We know, God, that you're always speaking, that you love us and you're always making a way as you have shown us so many times and will continue to make a way. We just give you the glory and the praise. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for all that you've allowed us to see and hear as we have studied these past four weeks, how you speak. Bless us now, Lord God. Every person is on the list. Those that we didn't even mention, Lord God, you know who they are. We thank you for the healing for those who needed it. We thank you for the jobs who were seeking a job. We thank you for the financial blessing for some. And we pray right now for those out of the heart of safety who are not saved, that they will hear and accept you before it's too late. Because we can see right away the time is winding now. Bless, we bless everything that we do as we do it for your glory it's in jesus holy and matchless name we pray and we say amen amen and amen god bless you children of god have a wonderful rest of your week i will see you all next week as we continue on studying the word of god don't forget to share and inbox me with how god speaks to you bless you now bye-bye